everyone my name is Linda Gundel I am the CEO and founder of Linda's Perfection Creations Linda's Perfection Creations is a event planning and wedding decor company we cater to small and large events in around Philadelphia we do full service partial custom events we do milestone celebrations so pretty much anything that need planning and decor we handle it all if you are joining my channel for the first time please like share and subscribe to my channels so you can get cool updates and cool information about all your wedding planning needs and all your event needs. I am a master certified wedding planner and a certified florist. I have many, many years of experience in the wedding industry. So today we're going to continue on part two. Um, we're talking about all the questions that you need to, that you need to know about wedding planning. Um, some of your top questions that people ask in wedding planners. So today I'm just giving you some free tips and free information that you get for free. As I said, I, my role is to help everyone plan and make sure they have a successful event. So these are things question that I hear over and over and, and uh, I just want to give it yesterday. We'll talk about, you know, from the lightings and from hiring a DJ, you can go back and maybe I would just attach it to this video so that you can kind of click that would be easy for you to watch. Um, from plus one to sorting that information. So today I'm going to just jump right into it. And then the question is that, how do I inform my guests? Or they, how do I, you know, form your, enroll your guest list? Your guest list, I would say, is that there are, to finalize your guest list, there's are multiple ways to do it. It's not something you just write. You will have to fine tune it because sometimes when you start a wedding, people write the whole list out and you realize that you got more people. Fine tune your list. Make sure those I tell my couple all the time, if you're doing your wedding list, make sure you want to put the people in there that you want, that you cannot see your wedding going around. And I understand sometimes mom and dad and parents will want to bring 20 friends and bring a 20 guest list and all these people. If they are paying for the wedding, sometimes it's a little tricky because, hey, it's their money, but you still need to set a guideline on what it is, how many people you are with. But if they are willing to pay for the cost, sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and do some of those things. Um, but write down your guest list and sometimes the way to determine that is that talk to the first thing is talk to the people who are paying for the wedding, how much they're willing to allocate funds. They're already, if it's you, it's your spouse, if it's your parents, it's their parents, just make sure those talk conversation is head on early. And then it's, it's going to be difficult because sometimes you feel like, oh my God, I don't want to make this person feel bad. Should I invite this person? Should I not invite this person? Fine tune it a couple of times, go already work on together, and then they will help you decide. Remember, not everybody's going to come in, people in your school, um, people you've been knowing for 20 plus years. If they are intimate to you, something important to you, you can do it. Not everybody at your job can come. So just make sure, not some you know, your closest friends, some people you lost out of touch with. Just make sure you put the right people on your list. And this will help you a whole lot question people is that how do I know what to do next when you hire a planner that's some of the key word hiding a planner because they are trained professional trust their judgment if you hire a judge trust they know exactly what it is to do they can guide you they can help you along the process they can tell you step by step if you are doing it yourself you know most websites have um checklists that you can check up I know the wedding why or not have this information and a lot of free website you can even google it and they'll give it a start but a wedding planner will definitely guide because on google they will tell you give you a list but it doesn't necessarily mean those are the important thing but work with a planner that they can help you and trust them when you hire a planner trust them they know what to do they've been doing this for a while they before you even ask the question they already know what to do so trust your your, your planner on that and listen how do i predict that everybody going to RSVP? I tell people all the time, somebody says, oh, why well, invited out 50 people? I don't think all 50 people to come. Plan for all 50 people. If you want 50 people to come, plan a budget for 50 people. If the 50 people don't come, you have, you can cut it with your venue. You have up to two weeks to fine tune your guest list. So take on everybody else coming and make it easier. Don't plan for 20 because most of the time people will plan for a little and then everybody else and then it's stuck to trying to run around. Oh, well, maybe we should cut this. Maybe we should cut this. No, plan for everybody. Most of your guests that you invite, most of them come. It's a selective few that doesn't show up, but most of your people that you invite to your wedding do show up. So plan for whoever you invite, plan that they all come. 
and as the arrows if it start to roll in then you can find to who is come but if you're saying i'm only five fifty 50 or 200 ten thousand people whoever it is playing that everybody's going to show up it makes your life a whole lot easier and then the other thing why can flowers guarantee the colors in this game i get this all the time with flowers flowers by nature they are plant. i cannot tell you how a flower is going to bloom i cannot tell you how the color is going to look I'm not, even if I'm physically growing in myself, some like a lot of things that changes to something, it changes flowers. So we cannot guarantee you that this will be 100% this color. Sometimes maybe this color will plan for your wedding. Let's say plan your wedding six months or even a year. I cannot tell you what will grow that season. Maybe the season started, those flowers they didn't bloom the way it was supposed to do. Maybe the color's a little darker, it's a little lighter. We cannot, flowers cannot guarantee you that because we will be putting ourselves at risk of a lawsuit. So these by nature, colors specific might be lighter, might be darker based on the season, based on what it is that impact it. So that's the reason why the bloom change. Some bloom change in colors based on the nature and things that happen. So some flowers that we might be planting, it may not go the way it's supposed to go. So by nature, we trust it, but trust them. Trust us, I should say. We know the best to make sure that you get exactly what you want. So if things is not what we expect, we can still have flowers and colors that will blend with your wedding. That will give your day exactly the way you want to. Trust us to do our job. As a designer, we know our job and we, we study it. It's our reputation on online. So trust us, we will make your dream golden. I promise you. And also, sure, some people think, well, Instead of doing an open bar, should I just stock my bar myself? Trust me. The money you would take to get mixers and beard and bartending and earnings and going from store to store and buying all these things and buying the tools and everything, you're going to end up spending more money. Bear person cost going to go a lot. Sometimes people think they're setting costs. And maybe it's a two pieces. Maybe my friends, what well, if you're going to do that? Maybe go uh, instead of going to premium liquor, go with something lower. The setting instance where Stocking your shelf itself can save you a little bit of money, but it's a lot to deal with. It is so much to deal with. But weigh your option, weigh the average cost it costs by spending per person, and weigh the cost that person by calling it bar or drinks. So if you feel that it works for you, go with it. But I would say always, for me, if I'm going to save $10, or two hundred dollars it better be worth my time and my labor if i'm spending just to save fifty dollars and i'm adding more work on myself just to save a couple hundred it's not worth it because think about how much do you work for an hour to pay yourself an hour to run it around doing other things so weigh your options and then the thing is how do i incorporate something special in my ceremonies you know from setting element of surprise once again work with your planner work they know how to they are the people that keep your deepest darkest secrets we can help surprise your partner we can do there's a lot of things we can help you instead now we can help you incorporate those special things that mean for your your spouses and your family member to make those things happen your planner is your go-to we there's certain things if you tell me say hey um, don't say ash well, let me say i don't know anything i don't know anything but we are your guardian angel trust us and then another thing, Shua, let's a girl dress go on an invitation. Of course. You want people to know how to dress their invitation. If you don't tell people how to dress, they will kind of show you anyone your invitation or put it on there to let people know how you want to show up to your wedding. You don't want them to come there all willy-nilly and just look in a whole hot mess. Please do. Make sure those information is on there. Okay. How long should I take to um send my invitation out? Typically. Nine weeks before your wedding, you want to mail your invitation. RSVP is due within five weeks before your wedding because you want to have it on. There are still some of the scheduled who would take a longer time to do it. So even if they send it four weeks before, you still got two weeks before you meet your deadline with your venue. But you want to make sure you have everything close that you can send it to your venue, your caterers, or whoever it is. That way you'll have the information in advance. It's better because there's some people who scattle down to get things. You got to be tracking them down like, hey, I didn't send your invitation yet. But make sure they'll do that. And then it's saying that, would the venue allow me to close to 2 a.m.? It's about your venue. Hey, some venue will allow it. Some venue doesn't allow it. It's based on the time. 
that you want. Some venue will charge you extra hours. Some venue by the state is only till 12. Some is more, but some is one o'clock, some is two o'clock. It's on base on the venue. So you can ask the venue. These are some of the questions you ask them when you go there. Then they will be able to ask you all those questions and answer everything that you need to do for your wedding. So last but not least, I would say one of the questions people ask is like, what side do the bride family and the groom family sit on a ceremony? Typically for a Christian cer ceremony, the bride family sit on the left side um, and the groom sit on the right. For Jewish and the bride traditionally sit on the right and the groom sit on the right. So it's all based on, excuse me based on tradition but now you see a lot of couple right now that's kicking kitchen out of the door to say anybody can sit anywhere they can do you can just pick up your so it's all based on what you want to you pick what is best for your wedding and like i said it's your wedding you do whatever you feel is best to make sure that your dream is come true but once again thank you for watching my name is linda gunner i am the ceo and the founder of linda's profession creation please like share and subscribe to my channel Thank you for watching. You can follow me on www.lendersperfectcreationsevents.com. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.